We thank you. We praise you, Lord, Father. We give you glory and honor, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's, uh, without wasting time, let's get straight to the scriptures uh, today. I'm, I'm going to be referring to, uh, first of all, I'm going to start with uh, Luke chapter 8, uh, verse 5 through 15. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and it came up. The plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he had said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciple asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that... Though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes, takes away the word from their hearts. So that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it. But they have no root. They believe for a while. But in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear. But as they go on the way, they are choked by the life's worries, riches, and pleasures. And they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Let's turn our attention next to uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 20, uh, 31 onwards. Also talks about the parable of mustard seed and yeast. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants. And become a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch on its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour. Until it's worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parable. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creations of the world. One more scripture. I'm going to take you to the creation. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I will give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, which is a life-changing, which is a transformation powerful. Father, as we submit to you, we pray that Holy Spirit, you will allow the name of God to be hallowed and his kingdom come and his will be done. In and through these words. Amen. I want to bring to your attention two things from Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Uh, let me turn here. Uh, it says, Here, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. And also, the kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed into the large amount of flour. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 and 11, the disciple asked Jesus a question. Why do you speak to the people in parables? This is a question that always I pondered on. And he replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but not to them. Jesus used parable as a key that unlocks the kingdom principle. Here the parable of the mustard seed. The seed, the word, 
contains kingdom principles, simple hidden secrets, secret principles, but profound when placed in the right environment. Kingdom of God on earth works through God's ordained principles or the word of God. Luke chapter 8, 15, the seed on good soil for those with the noble and good heart, which is, in Bible reference, it's to the mind, it's the heart, the mindset, who hears the word, retain it, and by persevering, produces a crop. I want to keep that word in your mind. Now, you and I have, have access to these keys of the kingdom of heaven, but unless you know or understand its principle and how it functions and perseveres, and it allows you to use this key to enter the kingdom. And so it's called the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, verse number 11. I want to touch two secret principles. There are many, you know, when you read the uh, you know, gospels and the parables. I want to touch two secret principles of the kingdom of God this morning. Number one is the principle of East, the two uh, parables that we re read. East is an agent of change which uses a principle of rising agent. Yeast feeds on the sugar contained with the dough, producing carbon dioxide and alcohol in a process called fermentation. During bread making, the dough is left in a warm place. The warm causes fermentation to take place. Yeast is a natural rising agent. There are different kinds of yeast that's made, but this is the natural one. Yeast is used for leavening of bread. Yeast uses the sugar and oxygen in dough and oxygen dough to produce more yeast cells and it converts the fermented sugar present in the flour or dough into gas as carbon dioxide. This is called multiplication. The carbon dioxide makes the dough, the carbon dioxide makes the dough rises, which gives the bread a light and spongy tux, texture. I'm not giving you just a lesson to make bread, but there's some truth in it. The principle of yeast its impact happens only when it is in the right environment. It stays idle, ineffective, unproductive until when the yeast is placed in the dough. It influences the world it places and brings forth transformation. One cannot see the immediate principle, but time and power of the principle creates change to the dough it placed in. The principle of the kingdom of, the principles of the kingdom are the east placed, sown into our hearts and our minds. When we submit to the process of fermentation, it transforms us and rises within us and further increases the knowledge of his kingdom in us so that we may fulfill his purpose and plan where we are placed. You and I are the east placed in our workplaces and families and businesses and workplaces all over the places. God has placed us so that the kingdom of God can expand and impact where you are placed. Secondly, let me take you to principle number two, the principle of, excuse me, principle of mustard seed. In the scripture, seed represents the word, the message of God to us. Seeds, they contain high protein, starch and oil reserve that help in the early stages of growth and development in a plant. Likewise, once the word of God takes roots in our hearts and mind, the high nutrient or the nutrition in the word brings forth growth and development to a spiritual and physical life. The one who sows the good seed, he says he is the son of man, but the enemy is always distracting us from abiding in it to see through to fruitfulness. Mark 4, verse 3 to 8, he said, Here the farmer went out to sow his seed, but some fell on the path, some on the rocky ground, some among the thorns, and did not bear any grains. Still, other seed fell on good soil, the right environment for the seed, and he came up, grew, and produced a crop, which means was fruitful and multiplied 30, 60, 100 fold. Verse 9. Then Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
people are, you see this in the story, people are coming from all around to listen to Jesus teach. How old? Because of the condition of the heart, they continually heard him without listening. They saw what he did without perceiving, nor will they were willing to receive his message. They want the miracle. They want the things that he wanted to offer. He commended that as a prophecy about them had been fulfilled. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with the heart, and turn, and I will heal them. That's Matthew 13, 14, and 15. The greatest gift God has given us outside of Jesus was the scriptures, the word of God. He places incredible value on the word that was written, preserved, and passed down to us. It says in Psalms, you have exalted above all else your name and your word, and you have magnified your word about all your name. Psalms 132. The kingdom of God functions like a seed. The word of God is a seed that makes kingdom work in our hearts and lives. As kingdom people, we must be word-minded, meditating on it, to be continually planting seeds from scriptures that take root in us. You need to plant the seed to have a harvest. Because you cannot expect a harvest unless you have planted the seed. Yet also in the right environment. Not just throwing a seed anywhere does not bring crops. It is a symbol but profound truth. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8.31 Going back to the creation, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. This is an incredibly important word. God created everything with the ability to procreate through the law of seed. Everything that we do in, in, in this world, it has a principle behind it. I remember I spoke on it some time ago about you know, the principle of the law of gravity and the principle of aerodynamics. Everything that we do on this earth is placed with a principle. And we can harness and use seeds in our lives and this principle to see the, the growth that God can bring forth. Mark 4, 26, 20 says, Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. A seed can sit idle for a long period of time until it is placed in the ground, until it gets in the right environment, which is a good soil. It stays the same without any change. No fruitfulness happen. Its purpose won't be revealed or come to pass until. But when it's placed in the right environment and it allows the principle of transformation to happen, it produces hundredfold and multiplies. But when a seed is placed in a place or environment that is right and that is hovered by the Holy Spirit, it will be like a tree planted by the roadside. You know, many times, all those religions and the, the, the traditions sometimes blinds, sometimes millions of Christians, you know, we profess Christ in, the, in this hour, although they speak about and use the term kingdom of God, have failed to discern it. It's mysteries and it's revealing of which indeed has to be revealed. The one's eyes has to be enlightened by the counsel of the Holy Spirit to see the depth of the secret of the principles. A lot of people are toiling. They are pursuing all these different religions and people are toiling, pursuing for, to find what it is that for next uh, life after death. In Genesis in 3.17, it says that because of the curse, though painful toil you do, you produce only more of thorns and thistles. It gives food to eat just to survive, but by the sweat of your brow. But God's original kingdom mandate still stands in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. God blessed them to be fruitful and productive, multiply, to bring increase, and to replenish or fill the earth and renew the earth. To subjugate, that means to conquer and take control, dominate, or reign, 
reign as kings over the earth according to the authority and gifting and talent God has given you. You and I are given the secret principle to take control, to subjugate and dominate your circumstances against the principalities, the powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness. Not others, against others. So that the kingdom of God that is placed in you, that you understand, that you pursue to receive, will go forth and work the principle, the, the, the power of the supernatural. A yeast or a seed don't activate itself or its principle. Just because you believe something is true does not bring conviction. You don't change until conviction takes place to the point of action. You believe something because it is true. Not necessarily because it has convicted you. The thinking of your mind or information, just information, don't bring transformation. Conversion brings that. What we think interprets what we see and what we hear. The thinking of the mind changes only when we conceive what we believe and what we heard. And accept what we heard. Change don't happen until there is a conception. Conception happens when there is an agent of change. East in the, in the story is placed in the door. Change happens. And when you're conceived with something, everything changes. The way you look, the way you act, the way you feel, the way you react, and how you live changes. One can keep sitting with the word and under the word, but nothing happens until you conceive that word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Only conception brings forth a new life of fruitfulness. Unless something conceived, it never reproduces. We all produce who we are. Unless it reproduces, no multiplication happens. Unless there is multiplication or increase, one cannot subjugate or subdue. Unless subjugation happen, there can't be no domination or dominion over your circumstances because of the power of darkness that controls. God has given us the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God. Let not your hearts be calloused that we don't understand what we hear or be blinded because we don't see the truth. Worship team, you can come up. These are the principles personally I use in my life. I tested several of these principles in my life and found it very effective in my life, my health, my family, my work, my business. And I saw the power of God, which inspires me and brings for transformation to continue to pursue and seek the kingdom of God and his principles that is practical here on earth so that the kingdom of God expands in and through us. These amazing principles produce a supernatural results that brings transformation in the environment you use us, like a yeast in a dog. In a dog. I see secular businesses, many times in business, I see secular businesses using biblical principles because it produces supernatural results. God sent rain both on the righteous and the wicked. But the problem for the wicked, they don't trust the master of the principles or submit to the king of the domain. So the, en the, the, the enemy comes and steals the health, wealth, the peace, the joy, and the Holy Ghost righteousness. It is offered only to the children, to the citizens of the kingdom of God. Unless you test your faith and these principles in your life, it won't grow. You won't know the power of it. When your faith is dead, it brings discouragement and confusion. But if we test that small mustard seed faith in Christ and his secret kingdom principles, it is guaranteed to multiply, multiply and bring forth increase in your life. John 12, 24, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces seeds and multiplies. Then it subjugates, take control, and dominate the world, wherever you're placed, in your family, in your work, in your businesses. This is what the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart to share with you. The principles or the secrets the keys that allow you to function in the kingdom with 
power, with authority to control your circumstances. Because he that is in you, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it transforms you and your circumstances. And you are given that power. So no weapons of the enemy can or will prosper against you. When you understand it and pursue that, God will enlighten, God will enlarge you. And he will bless you to reproduce and be fruitful. May he grant his favor to multiply, his authority to subjugate and control your circumstances, and the Holy Ghost power to dominate your world, your circumstances. So his kingdom expands and enlarges in us first and through us and around us. May God bless you with this word.